All right, here we are with a fender mounted starter solenoid relay on a 1988 Ford. Probably has a lot of common things in common with uh, other Ford vehicles and maybe other makes. But for the sake of how it works, let's just think of electricity as water. So you have 12 volts coming from the positive terminal on your battery and it's flowing through this wire right here and it's flowing to right here where my pen is so it comes from the positive terminal and I've, I made this cable up so it's a little long left myself some extra slack and it ends right here so it's connected to this stud right here on this starter solenoid relay so 12 volts is right here where my pen's touching right now. These other wires also are receiving that same 12 volts. Some of them are fusible links and they go other places in the truck. One of these wires goes to your ignition switch, which on this truck, when you turn your key all the way forward to the start position, a rod moves that ignition switch, it's, it's mounted on top of the steering column. And when that switch closes, just think of it like a light switch in your house, turning on a light. When that switch closes, power shows up here. Power comes back here. So it comes from the battery to this stud, out one of these wires slash fusible links. You turn your switch to the run position, I mean to the start position, and 12 volts comes back here. And on this solenoid, it's got an S on that terminal right there. There's the letter S. So that's coming from that ignition switch on top of the steering column. But what happens when this gets power? This, this wire right here. What happens is picture this pin as the internals of this, this solenoid relay. There's a, there's a metal disc in there. When you turn the key to start, it closes. It contacts these two studs. When you let off the key, it opens. Closes, opens. Start, let off. When it closes, the, the internal plate in here closes these two studs. It sends power down this wire, and that wire goes to the starter and on this truck there is no other solenoid at the starter the starter spins and the truck starts hopefully right now you hear a lot of people talk about ground what is ground well, you know what is it ground for the sake of understanding on a vehicle is the negative battery terminal right there there's a negative symbol right here there's a positive symbol so all this electricity is trying to get back to here it's trying to get back to this negative ground how does that happen on this truck you turn the key to the start position and the contact closes 12 volts flows down this wire to the starter and the starter motor gets its ground from the engine block. So rather than run a wire back to here, to the negative terminal, the starter mounting bolts provide the ground to the engine block. Well, how does the engine block get grounded? I ran this cable right here. And you're not going to be able to see where it finally connects because it's way down there, but I'll wiggle it around some. It's on the lower left face of the engine block. So electricity flows through the positive cable, through these terminals, when you, as long as you have the key in the start position, down to the starter, through the starter to the engine block, and then back here to the negative battery terminal. And that's why it's important to keep these clean. See this corrosion? These aren't the best battery terminals. 
In fact, they're they're they take a lot of maintenance. But if you keep these clean, you'll have a good engine ground. A lot of times, when people say, "Well, my truck won't start; it just clicks," these are actually the problem. So, the other ground that's here that's not that's not really apparent is this metal plate is grounding this inner coil when this when you turn your key to the start position and this closes the plate that's an electromagnet it needs a ground it's connected to this metal plate right here well how does that get grounded that's why there's ground jumpers around in different places on the truck and uh one of them is right here you see this see this braided line that's a ground jumper it's a bonding jumper so if i if i had some lights in my hood which i don't and i connected i connected the negative side of the light to this hood in theory that would be a ground source so there's all these grounding jumpers in different places and uh that's, that's how the ground system works. Rather than run an individual wire back from every component, every electrical component in the truck, things just get grounded to the metal of the frame. So I hope, I hope that helps people, you know, and it takes some of the mystery out of it. It's, uh, sometimes it's hard to explain in a, uh, internet setting in words and pictures without actually having a video. So thanks for watching.